Welcome back. Calm in Ferguson this morning after mostly peaceful protests briefly took a hostile turn overnight. And today, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder will be heading to Ferguson, pledging a full and fair investigation into the shooting death of Michael Brown. His visit comes amid calls for the St. Louis County prosecutor, uh, Robert McCulloch, to step down because there are concerns that he, he isn't able to be or he won't be impartial in his duties. Let's dig deeper into all the facets, especially of the visit of Eric Holder with Paul Callen, a CNN legal analyst, as well as Mo Ivory, attorney and radio personality. Good morning once again, guys. A lot. Uh, a lot going on day by day in this. I guess that's good and bad, I guess we could say. But when it comes to the investigation, we can now kind of focus on that. But I want to ask first, Paul, what you make of Eric Holder's visit today. What does Eric Holder arriving on the scene, what does it do? What happens when Eric Holder arrives? What's the impact? Well, I think it has symbolic importance to the community uh, in that the Justice Department is really uh, making an appearance through its most important uh, person, the Attorney General. But I think secondly, um, when I look at what's going on, this is a really active Justice Department investigation. You know, usually the feds sit back More and so they monitor. More so than you would see in the past, maybe? Oh, yeah. Usually, you know, they'll make a press conference type statement. We're monitoring the situation. But they they have 40 FBI agents from the Civil Rights Division on the ground doing what Eric Holder has described as hundreds of interviews. They've done an independent autopsy in the case. So they are poised to take this case over very quickly if they opt to do so. Now that's very unusual for justice to be that actively involved in a situation this early. Usually they let the locals finish uh, their case and then they only get involved if they don't think it was handled properly. No, I want to get your take. Is it is it enough, even if it is just a symbolic visit? Because Paul and I were talking just before we came on. It is rare that federal mm -hmm. civil rights violations, federal civil rights uh, uh, charges, if you will, do uh, are ever raised. Sure. I, I, I do think it's symbolic, but I think we don't know if it's enough as of yet because we only will be able to determine that to determine that as we go along. But I certainly think that it's sending a message that says, OK, we're at a boiling point. We know in the past this hasn't really reaped many results that, you know, have calmed the issues, which, of course, are racism, police brutality. But I think that what Attorney Eric Hold, Attorney General Eric Holder is doing is saying we are here. We hear you, we see what's going on, and this time we're going to try to do it right and make some changes. What? So I hope so. What is the likelihood, though, Paul, if you had to guess, that federal mm. civil rights charges would be brought. It's very rare. There's a high bar to be met. Well, yeah, uh, statistically, they, they literally uh, get involved in monitoring hundreds of cases across the country. Monitoring hundreds but of cases, they very, right. But they very rarely actually bring charges. Usually it's a situation where state and local authorities either refuse to bring a case or they bring a case and lose the case. Uh, and we've seen it in the Rodney King case in California, and we could cite other cases. Then federal authorities come in, supersede, and take the case over. But it's a very, very rare event, statistically speaking. And then let's look at what's happening also on the ground. The fact that the grand jury, Mo, could be starting to hear evidence today um, in St. Louis. What do you make of the fact that I I've heard from many people that this is quite fast for them to be moving in this direction? Sure. Well, I mean, I do think it's fast, but that doesn't mean that we'll have an answer or charges also in a fast manner. This grand jury could take months, weeks to come mm. up with, uh, you know, charges and decide what they're going to do. But I want to make the point, which a lot of people I feel are confusing, the difference between an arrest of Darren Wilson versus a grand jury finding that they are going to move for forward with charges. He can be arrested at any time if they feel that there is probable cause. I think what is agitating people so much is that there's so many arguments that, well, we have to go through due process. Oh, we have to wait for the grand jury. An arrest and an indictment are two different things. So I hope that Eric Holder will come today. He will speak with the prosecutor. He will emphasize the need to have an arrest because surely there is enough probable cause at this point to arrest Darren Wilson. What do you think, Paul? Well, you know, I, I wanted to emphasize one thing that I found to be very interesting in Eric Holder's press release that was issued in connection mm -hmm. with this visit because McCullough, the local prosecutor, has been been criticized as being too tied to law enforcement. Right. He's got family in law enforcement. A lot of people then saying he can't be He impartial. can't be fair and impartial. impartial. Eric Hall Holder notes in his own biography that his brother is a retired law enforcement official. So 
uh, even the attorney general has connections to law yeah, enforcement but the, but himself. So sure, but it's I think the uh, only difference, somewhat ironic, Paul, I think. Yes. Yeah, but I think, Paul, the only difference is that having a relative in the um, police department versus having a relative who was killed at the hands of a black man, I think is just a little bit different. No doubt. No doubt there's a difference. But it, it emphasizes that there, uh, these, uh, in law enforcement, there are a lot of connections that go on. Sure. And you, it, you see it constantly. Sure. Well, and there's no question this prosecutor is going to be watched at every turn of, of this investigation or of this case. I mean, the governor came out just yesterday and said that he said he is not going to ask the, pros the prosecutor to recuse himself. There's a well-established process by which a prosecutor can recuse themselves from a pending investigation and a special prosec prosecutor be appointed. So no matter the mounting pressure, it doesn't sound like it's going to change anything. Well, we have to understand this is an elected prosecutor. He's sure. been in office since 1991. He's been, over he's been elected overwhelmingly by the voters as district attorney. So he's not going to be taken off a case unless you can show a real conflict of interest. Now, he could, of course, say himself, um, this is not the case for me. I'm too close to it. Something happened to my father that would make me un, you know, fit or mm -hmm. uh, improper to handle the case. But um, he, right now, he's indicated that's not a problem. Hey, so. I think he takes a chance, though, by not recusing himself. If there isn't a conviction or the charges don't move forward, that people will absolutely say it was because he was being biased. So not only are we taking a chance with going forward with him, but I think he's also taking a chance on his career by, you know, by taking the chance that if this doesn't uh, uh, fit the community or, or or the perception is that he didn't work hard enough, you mm -hmm. know, he probably won't be in office again. Well, the easiest thing and for this guy... that's a risk guy, he can take himself, I guess. The easiest thing for this guy to do, for the local prosecutor to do, be walk away from the case. But sure. uh, prosecutors, frankly, when a big case like this comes along... Uh, it's a once-in-a-lifetime. Uh, it is, and they want to hold on to it. And sure. if he's a man of integrity, he'll he'll say, you know, I can I can handle this case, and my experience will help me handle it in a fair and proper way. So and we'll have to see what develops here. But um, the law true. doesn't require him to be excused. This well, is really going to be up to him personally. Well, and as we as we had kind of had been hoping we could have talked yesterday, we can finally talk now with a little bit of uh, more peace and calm happening in the overnight yeah. hours. We can now start focusing on this investigation, where it goes. Eric Holder on the ground today, a very important visit and very significant, many folks are saying, the fact that in the middle of an investigation, the Attorney General himself is going essentially to the site of the crime, or, yes. the, or the site of the scene of the crime. So we're going to be looking more into that. Mo and Paul, thank you so much. Thank you.